right now in California, and particularly in Northern California, there's some really good things happening with our salmon, steelhead, and other fisheries, and also some really bad things happening. The McCallamy River, which is a tributary of the, of the San Joaquin River that flows into the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta, is seeing a record run of fish go over Woodbridge Dam. They're expecting it to exceed the um, previous record of 18,000 fish that was set back in 2011. And they're not through the, the salmon spawning season yet, but I went up there to the hatchery last week and just, just that morning they brought in 1,400 um, new salmon and they spawned a number of them that were ripe. So they're seeing, uh, you know, really good um, return to a, to a river that had very small runs for many years. Um, steelhead is also looking like it's going to be much improved over, over previous years. There's over uh, 650 steelhead that they've counted in the hatchery so far and that season runs till February. Um, we won't know the exact figures until the seasons are over. The salmon ends around December 18th and the steelhead season ends at the end of February, but it's, it's, it's uh, projected to be well over previous runs, record runs. Um, that's the good news. On the other hand, um, you go to the winter run Chinook on the Sacramento River and that run has declined um, significantly in recent years. There was only 1,123 fish that were reported by state and federal biologists this year. Now the winter run used to be one of the biggest runs of salmon. Back in 1969, there was over 117 thousand winter run that returned and this this declined to around 200 fish in 1991 um, for a while the runs were slowly rebuilding but as a result of the drought and poor management decisions by the state and federal governments the run has declined again um, so those are like the two extremes of the fishery now the salmon fishery um, but the winter run is a wild run, whereas the, it, it, the, the fall runs are mainly supported by hatcheries sent, that were built when the major storage dams like Shasta, Oroville, Folsom, um, Comanche, and Friant dams were, were built on the Sacramento San Joaquin River and their tributaries. And um, it, there's other areas of the salmon fishery. Um, that are that are kind of in between. Um, the the Feather River is 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 seeing a, a a boom, big boom on its fall run. Yet its its uh, spring run was the lowest on record. So you know it's it, it, when you when somebody asks about the salmon and the steelhead fishery, it's a mixed bag. And remember that we went through a drought and. One of the big factors, you know, our fisheries would be in a lot better position now if there wasn't so much water being taken out of the delta. Um, you know, there's this curious uh, scientific uh, concept called fish need water. And, you know, when they don't get the needed water, they don't thrive. And um, the record year for water exports to Southern California and corporate agribusiness um, was in 2011 um, over uh, 6.5 million acre feet and th um, that was under the Jerry Brown administration and the previous record was under the Schwarzenegger administration so and uh, so the you know it's a, it's a it's a nuanced but the overall trend in at least the wild salmon fisheries like spring run and winter run is going downhill. And I was part of a run for salmon 
that went past the river right here, the Sacramento. We, um, we, we it, go, it was um, a run that, uh, you know, we call it a run for salmon, but it included boating, um, bicycling, um, walking, and, and uh, pat paddling uh, dugout canoes up Shasta. And it went all the way from Zagorate, which is a sacred site, um, Native American site in Vallejo, all the way up to the McLeod River above Shasta Dam. And it was, was um, organized by the Winnemum Wintu tribe, which is the McLeod River tribe that's trying to bring back the original run of Winter Run Chinook from New Zealand. Now, why New Zealand? Well, back around over a hundred years ago, um, the eggs from, from uh, Winter Run, from, from Livingston Stone Fish Hatchery, which is on the McLeod, were sent to New Zealand to start a run there. And guess what? Those, those runs are thriving. And so they have the original run of Winter Run Chinook that that the uh, Winterman Wintu tribe want to bring back to the river above Shasta Dam. Um, there's just one catch to that. Um, they got to build a raceway, or, or, or like what they're going to do is connect a, a creek called Cal Creek on Lake Shasta, um, or on the, that empties in the Sacramento River with another creek, dry creek, that goes into Lake Shasta. And by connecting those those two two uh, rivers, they don't have to build a fish ladder. They can just have like a natural natural river course uh, go up in elevation, rather than building an artificial ladder. And 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 uh, they've been fighting for that, along with uh, environmental groups, other tribes, and fishermen, for for uh, many years. But um, the, the ironic thing. What, what, it, what is the federal government's resistant to bringing back the Winter Run Chinook because they say, well, they don't know if they're the original strain. Mm -hmm. But the New Zealand biologists and the Maori biologists at the conservation hatchery that they manage in New Zealand on the Rakaira River have the records that they were introduced. There weren't other fish introduced there. And it's kind of like, you know, you, you, have, you have a source of eggs and fish that they're willing to send their biologists over here to you know to work on and get the runs going here but they're reluctant to do it because they say well it may not may not be the original fish even though they have the records that it is um, so those are those are uh, two of the, um, the the winter run and restoring the spring run are two of the major areas that that I'm working on and fishing groups and environmental groups and tribes are working on now. Yes, there's a there's a number number of causes of the overall decline of wild salmon, steelhead, uh, striped bass, shad, uh, uh, green sturgeon, white sturgeon, and other fisheries. Um, over the past 30 years. Um, but the biggest is the state and federal water pumps on the South Delta that deliver millions of acre feet every year to big agribusiness interests on the west side of the San Joaquin Valley and also to Southern California water agencies. Um, that drives the other factors. The other factors are are uh, water pollution, um, increased toxics in the water, invasive species such as the as a clam that's invaded Sassoon Bay and, and had an impact upon ecosystem. Um, and the other thing that impacts it too is is uh, some predation by birds and fish in the places um, where 
where the water is exported south, like at Clifton Court Forbay. But it, the, the, the factor that drives everything else is taking more water out of the estuary. Like between 2003 and 2011, the, the, there was record exports of water out of the Bay Delta estuary, and that's caused the decline of, of these species. Um, the wild population, their species. The thing that that's kept the salmon going is is the fact that there's hatcheries at, that that uh, have kept a fishable population of fall run Chinook salmon going in the river. But um, thing, but the problem is that the California governor Jerry Brown is is fast-tracking a project that will make things even worse. And I, I thought Jerry Brown was the environmental governor. Well, he talks a good game, but it, when, it, when it comes comes to action, he, he, he has um, a, a, a whole bunch of very anti-environmental policies that he supports. And w one of the major ones of these is the Delta Tunnels, which which is opposed by a broad coalition of Southern California ratepayers, fishermen, tribes, environmental groups, environmental justice um, communities and organizations, and a, and a bunch of elected officials. And he views this at his, as his legacy project. What the project would do, or is a, is a plan because it's a, it's a, it's a uh, joint plan between the state and federal governments, although Brown is the, is the guy that's pushing it, is to put two gigantic tunnels under the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta. Um, they would be 35 miles long and they'd be capable, you know, c combined of exporting over 9,000 uh, cub cubic feet per second of water, which is equivalent to the entire flow of the Sacramento River in low water years. So, so uh, mo uh, there's a growing opposition to this plan, but in spite of all the evidence, the studies against it, and the plethora of lawsuits, he continues pushing this plan forward. And at, at the latest count, I, I count 22 lawsuits with over well, close to 90 separate parties. I mean, when you got everybody suing, you got Northern California counties, you got cities, um, entities that normally don't sue over environmental issues like this, like they are now. Um, you got um, farming groups, you got <laughs> fishing groups, tribes like the Winterman Wintu tribe, you got the, um, the California Indian Water Commission that's party to one of the suits. You know, there's something really wrong, and and uh, you know we, us as uh, Delta Tunnels opponents, we've done everything we try to convince him to do the right thing, but he doesn't want to do it because he wants to build his legacy. Uh, well, the fact is, as an, uh, as uh, as the phrase goes. Um, native phrase go, water is life. Water, water is the key to all life. Um, as uh, they say in demonstrations against fracking, which is an, another one of, of uh, Jerry Brown's policies. He, he wants to expand fracking in um, California. You can, uh, y y you know, you can't, you can dr uh, you drink water, but you can't drink oil, okay? And you can frack as much as you want, build tunnels as much as you want, but having um, clean, safe, reliable water that's good for people and, and fish and wildlife and the environment is, is, is what we need now. And unfortunately, um, there's, there's a collapse in the Delta. Now, I talked about the species that most people are familiar with, like the salmon and the steelhead. But there's also in the Delta right now a, a phenomenon called the pelagic organism decline. 
the, the acronym for that is POD. I mean, scientists always have to come up with a with an acronym to describe something, but and agencies do the same thing. But the, the pelagic organism decline was first discovered in 2005 by uh, uh, some courageous state and federal scientists that decided to go public on this. And they said that the, the um, delta was, was um, threatened by a, a crash of, of species, including a lot of the smaller species, the, the plankton, and and forage fish and this this includes the like the uh very the, the controversial delta smelt and you, you hear big agribusiness and and some of the um big egg owned congressmen in congress talk about that's just a, a little minnow but actually the delta smelt is is an eco is a um indicator for the whole ecosystem it it, it, uh, if the delta smelt is gone, like the salmon, people will be eventually gone too. It, 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 the, that means that the water isn't safe to drink for people. That means that the f fish aren't safe to drink. And so this is, uh, you know, it's been battled over, but it's unique to the delta. It's found only there. There's no other delta smelt found in the world. Yeah, they're one of the major pushers of it, and they are, are very smart in, in the way that they approach politics. I, I've done some articles on, on them, and so have other people, um, including a guy named Yasha Levine and the late Mike Tour, exposing all the money that they've spent on California politics. And they tend to favor um, centrist Democrats, <coughs> but they also donate millions <coughs> to Republican candidates and causes. And they, they uh, buy both sides of the aisle off, and they're a very proud contributor to Jerry Brown's campaign. They were a proud contributor to Barack Obama's campaign, as well as, as the Republican candidate back in... Uh, 2008, and they've continued to put lots of, of money into into the campaigns and support propositions that would benefit them. Like they put 150,000 into Proposition One back in um, 2014. That there was over 21 million, uh, including lots of corporate money, big oil money, big ag money, um, also some big corporate NGOs like, like the Nature Conservancy uh, and, and also uh, logging company interests including the Fisher family who own Mendocino and, and uh, they, they own Humboldt the whole Red state Bay. of Mendocino? I mean, no. the county of Mendocino? The whole city? <laughs> no, they own the they own the they own the, the, the they own lots of land. Okay. Man. Many hundred thousands of acre land but they own Mendocino uh, Redwood Company and and, and Humboldt Red, it, probably, it might not own the, the city too. Who knows? But uh, but uh, so those are the interests. So the, the Resnicks are just one of many the the um, that contribute to these campaigns. But the Resnicks, I think, are, are slicker more than most because they come off as limousine liberals because they contribute to the arts, millions of dollars to the arts. They contribute to, to UCLA, they contribute to UC, um, uh, UC Davis, and in fact, they sit on the boards of, of, of those universities or, or advisory committees, and it turns out that Stuart Resnick was an advisor um, along with uh, Riley Bechtel to Linda Katehi, who was the the um, chancellor of UC Davis? It became famous for the pepper spray video, and she was yeah she was the one that was uh, was in charge when 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 students were pepper sprayed for protesting back in 2011. Yeah, well, 
you, you, you read in the New York Times and Mother Jones and Rolling Stone and a bunch of papers that how Jerry Brown is the resistance to Trump, that he's the green governor, that he's the voice of green energy, but that that is it is based on a false premise, and that's that California is a is a the, the nation's green leader in the nation, and in many ways it isn't. Um, now, California has a lot of good laws, okay? We, we have, you know, the California Environmental Water Quality Act. We have the California Endangered Species Act. We, we, um, we have a whole bunch of laws um, that are good laws, like the Marine Protected Life Protection Act. However, the problem is, is that the regulatory apparatus, the, re the regulators, are captured by big oil and other big oil or big money interests and um, con you, you know contrary to popular belief um, people think that the movie industry or or even agribusiness is the biggest lobbying state it's big oil big oil dominates California po politics and in fact whereas Jerry Brown is praised as a green governor he actually received over 9.8 million from from big oil, big gas, and energy company interests and utilities. Um, so, you know, you you don't you don't see that in the articles that you see that praise him as a green governor. And actually, his 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 policies, his climate change policies. Um, one of the centerpieces of it is cap and trade, and that's supported by big oil. In, in, in fact, big oil put 10.8 million in one quarter. That was the second quarter of, of 2017 to push his cap and trade bill. And that's in California. Only. That's that's in California. That's a cap and trade bill, and that's the one that he holds up as the model of the nation. It was opposed by over. 65 environmental justice conservation and consumer groups um, because of disproportionate effects it would have on people of color farm worker communities and indigenous communities um, it, 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 it basically uh, it was revealed um, through a set of emails that the Western States and Petroleum Association actually wrote the, the cap and trade bill or um, in other words the, the bill that Brown came up with was based on a big oil wish list and they got what they wanted um, and, and, and it's a complex bill but essentially what it does is it creates all sorts of loopholes for big oil and um, the, it's, it's based on on the fact that California is the third largest oil state oil producer in the nation. And so the oil industry has always had a big influence upon California politics in spite of the, the green image. Mm -hmm. And um, th that's just one of the, the bad policies that Brown has, the cap and trade, which, which uh, environmental justice groups call it pollution trading. And, and it has a big impact upon particularly indigenous communities because what you're doing is you're, you're going through a, a ba basically a market-based mechanism of trading pollution. Not where you stop pollution, but where people buy credits um, you know, to pollute. It's a pay to pollute scheme. It gives them permits to pollute rather than, than actually regulating the, the, the carbon-based pollution you know, out of out of existence, or at least reducing it, and it, it, it just it transfers the problem from one place to another, trades it for one other, and as a result of Jerry Brown's policies, indigenous communities in Brazil and elsewhere are threatened. Um, the the that's just one of the one of the policies that's bad. The other one is that he supports fracking, expansion of fracking. And a bill that was supposedly meant to regulate fracking back 
in, in, in 2013, Senate Bill 4 was in fact a, a bill that will, ex, that has expanded fracking in California. And, and uh, the other thing is that Brent, the, the Green Governor Brown, he, he supports offshore fracking, okay? You heard him speaking out against Trump's plan to, new, to do new offshore oil drilling off the California coast. Well, some people have the, have the impression that there's not, that, that the California coast is protected from oil drilling. That's not the case. In, in, um, in 20 year period, there was over 203 new fracking operations developed off the coast under old leases. All, all the current, the, the current um, ban uh, 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 under California laws is is for new leases, but that doesn't mean that people can, uh, can uh, the oil industry can't frack the existing leases. Now, and and the oil industry actually says, and in this case, I actually believe them. The Western States Petroleum President Catherine Reese Boyd said that that the that uh, they're not that they're oil companies really aren't looking for opening new wells off the California coast right now. Of course they're not. They want to, it's more cost effective to frack old wells and, and, uh, and to expand fracking on land. Um, well, that's been going on for a, a long, long time. Um, on, on like with the okay um, I've been involved with the particularly on the Klamath River um, I covered the Klamath fish kill of 2002 and that was in uh, September right and that became a big story and I was one of the first to cover it and I got a report from a fishing guide um, about this big kill on the river and he says, you got to get the word out to the world about it. Tell everybody about it. And then uh, he had me talk to a tribal elder uh, from the Yurok tribe that told, that told me the whole story about what's going on. Well, there's different figures given for the amount of fish that were killed. But there's anywhere from, from um, 35,000 up to 68 or even 80,000 that different sources have reported but it was a huge kill it was a traumatic event for the tribes on the river who lived off those fish for thousands of years it was a traumatic event for for fishermen and all the businesses that depend on that river and so um i work closely with the with the Yurok, the karuk and the uh, the um, klamath tribe and the hoopa valley tribe on restoring the river um all uh, and so that's how i i've been involved but it was before that before that we were we were uh working together on you know on the fishery management council in trying to restore the klamath river but that's what's really you know there's been movements to restore the salmon that have been going on for decades but it really got fired up in 2002 by that fish kill and also um, by the record of decision in 2000 um, by the Clinton administration, by Bruce Babbitt, the Secretary of Interior at the time, to, to uh, give more flows to the Trinity River. This was an unprecedented decision that was supported by the tribes, fishing, commercial and recreational fishing groups and environmental groups. And so that, it, those uh, two things, the fish kill, and the record of decision have, have carved the current campaign and I'm currently working to bring the um, dams down on the Klamath. My last question, sit up straight. Uh, oh, could, could, could I um, do one thing with you? Um, I wanted to talk just a little bit about the oil industry, just how, how pernicious its influence is. Daniel, uh, how pernicious is the oil industry? See, the oil industry is very sophisticated in California. Um, they, 
they there's the lobbying money that they use and that's the one that I've written the most about that uh, was just in in the legislative session of 2015 to 2016 it was it was over uh, 34.1 uh, million dollars that were spent on lobbying the oil industry and and that has led to virtually every bill over the past three years that isn't approved by the oil industry isn't either supported by them or gutted so it's essentially meaningless every every bill except for one that wasn't appro uh, approved by the oil industry has failed to make it out of the legislature i mean they have to basically approve it because they're so powerful and 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 uh the other other key areas is is uh, secondly would be campaign contributions the third one would be astroturf groups and and the fourth one would be getting on regulatory panels and one which i've covered a lot is the fact that the president of the western states petroleum association in this green state of California was also chair of the Marine Life Protection Task Force to create marine um, protected areas in Southern California. So explain AstroTurf Groups. AstroTurf Group is a, is a group that um, looks like a green group or looks like a, a good group, but it's actually funded by oil industry um, funds. And the Western States Petroleum Association is key in establishing those. And we don't know how much money they spend on them, but they, the, the one key one is like the California Drivers Alliance. Okay, that's not California drivers that set that up, it's the oil industry, you know, and fighting, fighting uh, uh, the gas tax. Um, and they do, they set up all sorts of groups um, and, and the back in uh, back several years ago, the Western States Petroleum Association did a, a slide presentation at a conference about what great work they were doing and all the organizations they set up. And there's an actual slide that I've published and other people of all the different organizations named. I mean, they're proud of this. They're not. I mean, this isn't something they're trying to hide. They're they're they're, they're uh, glad. That they're doing it, but um, so so that that would be the the third thing they do. The fourth thing is, as I mentioned, was the regulatory panels, and I could offer many examples where they're on regulatory panels. But the fifth thing, and this is real interesting, is collaboration with media, mostly big mainstream media. And this you would never read this in mainstream media, but the L.A. Times teamed up with Occidental Petroleum to do a website talking about how great petroleum is for people in the environment. And that was exposed by a tweet, a tweet, a proud tweet from the Western States Petroleum uh, president about this great new website that was started up in an uh, environmental group that works on, uh, on, on different oil and energy issues expose that and then it, I mean it's, it's 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 if it wasn't so tragic and have an impact upon so many uh, communities it would be funny yeah. um, I I work full-time as an editor for fish sniffer publications and it's actually Northern California annual publications and we we published a number of publications over the year including the Sacramento River uh, guide and uh, a magazine called Game Fishing West, but the one, the main one, and one that we publish now is the Fish Sniffer magazine, which comes out every two weeks. Our website is www.fishsniffer.com. I also write for, for other websites. I do a, a outdoor column for the Stockton Record, and you can look up that. That gives a summary of good fishing tips once a week. I also write, write for the Daily Cause, um, for Elk Grove News Not, dot net, and for other websites. So, um, and uh, if people want to get a hold of me, um, the best way really is to go up to, to one of those websites. 
But my email, if you want to contact me, is Daniel Bacher, that's B A C H E R, at F I S H S N I F F E R dot com. Daniel Bacher at fishniffer.com, lowercase. Um, it's not Dan Bacher, it's Daniel Bacher. It's an email. Thank you.